trade trade between people on goods, services, and whatsoever. Now uh, we've expanded the the, the discussions uh, to a level that we couldn't even finish it. And today, inshallah, we'll just continue from where we stopped the last time. <coughs> Doctor, someone texted and asked a question. He said, uh, "You you gave a very very beautiful suggestion on how." people can contribute towards you know stabilizing the price of goods and services in mm -hmm. this country he said now in an islamic situation mm -hmm. what role do you think can government play in intervening in the market yeah thank you very much subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak ismuk wa sala jiddak wa la ilaha ghayruk thank you very much abu bakar um, in an islamic uh, system <laughs> Uh, it's, it's almost like the conventional system. Government is government is entirely is entirely responsible mm. for the welfare and the well-being of the people. Uh, in, in in an Islamic system of governance, mm. uh, uh, Muslims are obliged mm. to be obedient and to be respectful to government and to those that are in authority, to respect them in person, to respect the policies, to respect the decision, to respect their decisions, and to respect the laws of the land. Uh, so on the other hand, just like the tier of social contract, on the other hand, government is responsible for their well-being and their welfare. So, but like I was saying the last time, <coughs> government means who is government? Everybody is part of government. Uh, yes, the way we organize, there are people who are in the top leadership. They have their assistant, they have their ministers, they have their other people working f with them uh, somewhere along the ladder. But um, uh, it is very difficult for those that we identify or define as government mm -hmm. to know everything or to get into everything. And you know, you know people in society uh, have to be have to cooperate with government. So you know, it is part of our responsibility to be obedient and to cooperate with government. It's part of our responsibility to make sure, to make sure also that we, we 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 raise the alarm bell in the event of any irregularity. And that was why I, pro I reminded our listeners, our audience, that beautiful social, economic, and cultural institution of Islam, which we call the Hizba institution, mm -hmm. in which organizations, Muslim organizations, Muslim youths, uh, you know, um, Muslim preachers, they form their social, social organizations where they go voluntarily into the market environment and into other areas of life to see whether things are going in accordance with the teachings of Islam or no, or whether things are going in accordance with the laws of the land or no. If they, in a way, they, 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 they see irregularity, they will have to report them to the police or to the government. They will advise them first. They will advise them, they will engage them in constructive dialogue. Many people, if you engage them in constructive dialogue, it can, that can lead to positive changes. If they refuse to listen to advice, then now you can place the matter to the responsible authorities and they take action. And that's a way of helping government to make sure that they stabilize the situation. So that is exactly the Islamic view. Okay. Yeah. Now we go to the dealers, as you explained the last time, that yeah. uh, between the, the buyer and the seller, yeah. you know, the, the good must be ac an accepted good, and the dealing should be accepted. Yeah. Now someone asked me that if you, if you buy a car mm -hmm. from a drug dealer, mm -hmm an established drug dealer, mm -hmm. you buy a car from him and you start using that car, mm -hmm. you know, to earn your living. Mm -hmm. He said, that wealth you accrued, mm -hmm. you know, is it considered Islamically as, uh, as, as clean? You see, it depends on, uh, on, on a number of factors. If the person is a known drug dealer, mm -hmm. And you know very well that he he makes his earning out of drug trafficking, mm -hmm. which is prohibited by Islam and also prohibited by the conventional legal systems. So uh, you, you know, a, a, a pious Muslim, an obedient Muslim, should avoid dealing with him, because the principle as enunciated as provided for in the Maliki school in other schools of jurisprudence is that every haram property, anything which is haram, cannot be a subject of cannot be an object of sale. Anything which is haram, which is declared haram, cannot be an object of sale. Therefore, it becomes haram or prohibited for you to sell it or to buy it. But sometimes also, it may not necessarily, uh, that may not necessarily mean that the person gets the, the car out of drug, uh, drug dealing. He might have got the car out of, uh, you know, something else, which is halal. Or you may not know. If you do not know, uh, if you do not know that this is a drug dealer, or if you do not know where he has really got the car, you buy it in good intention, in good faith, that in my humble opinion will not carry any significant consequences. Coming back to this again, yeah. uh, if you have a tenant in your home, yeah. just from where, what you're explaining, yeah. now you rent a room to this tenant, yeah. but 
the lieutenant deals in drugs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But not in your compound. Yeah. Of course, you know, he deals in drugs, and yeah. when he comes, he pays you. Pay you. In fact, sometimes they overpay you. Yeah. And, and in fact, this make, it may make it very difficult mm. for the working class, mm. for the ordinary people like oh, us, yeah. to get a house oh, rent. Exactly. Because you cannot compete them. The price they, they offer okay. is well above the market price. And they tip the, you on, on top of that. This is both morally and legally prohibited. Uh, what the advice is that a Muslim should desist from that practice. You know, people who are dealing, dealing with drugs or with anything which is prohibited by Islam, the, the, the fact of the matter is that we should avoid them because, you know, you know the stomach, what do you put in the stomach? Is, the stomach is so sensitive. This is where the source of life comes. You know, you, you, what, do you, what do you eat or what do you drink nourish you. So you make sure that your flesh it's not being, you know, a sort of uh, 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 fat or sort of, um, uh, how do you call it, protected with something which is haram. So it is just like when somebody is eating something which has filthy or dirty uh, substance. It, it pollutes, you know, the environment inside the stomach. So the haram money, therefore, also pollute you as a human being, pollute the flesh. You pollute your system as a believer. And, 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 and like the tradition of Prophet Muhammad said, sometimes we see people praying, Allahumma, 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 God, oh God, may. God will never respond. For the simple reason that what they're, what, they're, what, they're, what they're living on is haram. The food they eat is haram. The water they drink is haram. The clothes that they put on is haram. Where they settle to rest at home is haram. So where on earth will Allah listen to you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so pure, is so high, so exalted, that he cannot listen, he will not listen to you, he will not simply respond to your prayers if your source of, source of living is dirty, is usurious, is haram, is out of manipulation, out of over-profiteering, and so on and so forth. Abu Bakr. Okay. Just to add on to that, there's a prophetic hadith which said, Kullullah min nabata bisahd. Wonderful. Yeah. That's very good. That was the hadith I tried to say, but it got, got just escaped my, out of my mind. <laughs> okay. That is the, the, the flesh which is being fed, mm -hmm. which is being grown out of filthy and haram, yeah. you know, uh, living. Mm -hmm. So that will definitely uh, may, may find mm -hmm. its resting place in Jahannam. Definitely. God forbid. Um, okay. Uh, still on transactional trade. Mm -hmm. uh, someone said uh, they deal with institutions that lend and keep money. Yes. Not the banks specifically, mm -hmm. because most of the banks did in yesterday, as you mm. said here. Yeah. Now this is the credit union system. Yeah. You know, which are low income earners, and some some people will deposit their money. Yeah. You know, in order to have something that they can take care of their lives with. Yeah. He said that kind of dealing, Islamically, you know, what is what is what is Islam's take on that? You know, you see, the problem is when you lend money. And you get a return out of the capital, like let's say you lend 100,000 and eventually get 120,000. Where is this 20,000 coming from, from, from? What is the basis of adding 20,000? Because Islam recognizes what you call al qabdul hasan. Although in modern Islamic banking, they will tell you that um, uh, you, you better engage in, 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 in something that you may, call, you, you may call profit and loss sharing process. You know, uh, sometimes, like, in, in, in other words, when you deposit your money in the bank, the bank can, you know, use the money to do business, <laughs> Islam halal business. And if the bank gets some profit, uh, part of the profit comes to you because that was the agreement, like Murab Han, so on and so forth. But when it comes to lending money directly, what Islam recognizes, what Islam accepts is that nothing should come on top of the principle because there's this concept of you know, people only go to seek loan when they are in dire need of it. Mm -hmm. And somebody who is uh, uh, under severe pressure, financial pressure, mm -hmm. need somebody to rescue him. Mm -hmm. You lend him money. Mm -hmm. If you lend him money and he pays you back the same capital, the same amount, mm -hmm. you have got your money back and you get reward also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get, um, uh, and you are, you are therefore not expected to put anything on top of the capital. If you put anything on top of the capital, then it becomes haram. Okay. Yeah. Although I like I said the last time, we will have to have a special session on riba. Mm -hmm. Maybe after this preliminary discussions. Yeah. But this exactly this is what one of the issues that will be definitely addressed. Okay. So what 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 I will advise that is that once you are out to lend your money to needy people to help them, don't put anything, don't add anything, any interest mm -hmm. or anything, whatever name you call it. Mm -hmm. 
the amount of money that you lend, make sure that you are paid the same amount of money. 